2025 Porsche 911 GTS, exploring the first hybrid model and its groundbreaking T-Hybrid technology. A Porsche 911 Hybrid might seem like the solution to a problem nobody posed. Hybrids were initially introduced to save fuel, reduce emissions, and boost eco-credibility, priorities that typically don't resonate with the average 911 buyer. Yet, here we are with the 2025 Porsche 911 GTS, the first hybrid version of this iconic model. So, why did Porsche's engineers dedicate extensive time to developing a custom hybrid system for the new generation 911? The 992.2? Notably, fuel economy was never mentioned during the numerous briefings before driving the new 911 GTS, the first Porsche equipped with the company's T-Hybrid technology. Similarly, there's no emissions-free driving mode. This isn't that type of hybrid. It follows the path of the Chevrolet Corvette E-Ray, featuring a small battery and a modest power boost, but without the all-wheel drive capability of the Corvette. The real innovation of this system, however, lies in the turbocharger. Porsche 911 GTS T-Hybrid. All about the turbo. Porsche often gives fancy names to everyday technologies, but in the case of T-Hybrid, the name is fitting. The T stands for turbo, as this system focuses as much on forced induction as it does on electrical augmentation. It begins with a modest battery, a 400-volt, 1.9-kilowatt-hour unit located in the front under the hood, replacing the traditional 12-volt battery which has been moved behind the rear seats. By modern standards, this battery is quite small, less than a third of the size Mercedes plans for the upcoming AMG GTSE performance. However, this isn't a plug-in hybrid. The battery powers an electric motor integrated into the dual-clutch PDK, the only available transmission. The motor itself produces 53 horsepower and 110 lbft of torque, and it works alongside a turbocharged 3.6-liter flat, six engine that delivers most of the system's 532 horsepower and 449 lbft of torque. Interestingly, there's only one large turbocharger instead of the smaller, twin units typically found on modern 911s. Expecting turbo lag? Actually, no. The turbocharger is supported by its own small electric motor, which not only spins it up to minimize lag, but also uses the turbo's excess momentum to generate 11 kilowatts of electrical current. Instead of a traditional wastegate to manage excess turbo pressure, the system provides a second dose of regeneration. This helps recharge the battery while driving, and the extra current can be directed to the hybrid motor, resulting in a double shot of additional power from the single turbo. Porsche 911 GTS on the track. The T-Hybrid system is intriguing on paper, but advanced technology doesn't always translate to a better sports car, particularly one with the legacy of the 911. However, the drawbacks are hard to find in this case. The battery pack does add about 60 pounds of weight to the system, but Porsche offsets that by removing some hardware from the engine, including the alternator and starter, both obviated by that hybrid system. The net result is a GTS that weighs 103 pounds more than the outgoing model, or about 180 pounds more than a base 992.2 Carrera. On the track, I was hard-pressed to feel that difference. Remember, we're talking about a 911 that weighs between 3,300 and 3,900 pounds, depending on which flavor you choose. On the sinuous and challenging Ascari circuit in Spain, the rear-wheel drive 911 GTS felt as eager and nimble as the base Carrera. In fact, it was even more poised through turns thanks to the bigger 245-35 R20 front and 315-30 R21 rear tires. It was steadier on the brakes, too, thanks to the optional carbon ceramics, PCCB and Porsche Speak, fitted at all four corners on the GTS models I drove. While the car does use the hybrid motor for regenerative braking, there was none of the mushy pedal feel you get in the average hybrid. In fact, I felt the most significant difference when I had my right foot flat on the accelerator. The GTS isn't wholly without turbo lag, but it really does take just a moment to hit peak boost and surge forward. You can hear that big impeller spinning at max RPM behind your head despite the deep, raspy roar of the sports exhaust, which comes standard. Porsche quotes a 0 to 60 miles per hour time of just 2.9 seconds, 0.3 second quicker than the last 911 GTS. 
You can immediately feel that extra power in the GTS thanks to the quicker turbo, but the hybrid motor also makes for sharper throttle response, even providing some torque fill on the upshifts to make those PDK changes feel even more seamless. It's a more immediate, brutal power delivery than I've ever experienced in a 911 before. Porsche 911 GTS, on the road. As good as the new turbo and hybrid system is on the track, it's more useful on the road. While the base Carrera is far from laggy, the GTS just feels that much more eager, perfect for quick overtakes or momentary flourishes between traffic lights. Just as crucially, the 911 GTS doesn't drive like a traditional hybrid. Yes, it does switch off the engine by default when you're sitting at traffic lights in normal mode, and it will get underway briefly under electric power, but you won't be idling around town silently here. Like most flavors of the 911, the GTS is still poised and livable on even miserably rough roads. Yes, the suspension is firm, and it's certainly a lively feeling car, but it's not backbreaking by any means. Though the rear seats are borderline useless, it's a beautiful long distance getaway machine for two. Porsche's optional Inno Drive, with adaptive cruise control and active lane control, helps make periods of highway droning and traffic crawling more bearable, too. The interior has also received a significant tech infusion, with a new, 12.6-inch curved and fully digital gauge cluster. Purists will lament the final retirement of the 911's iconic analog tachometer, but most buyers will appreciate the extreme configurability of the new display. 2025 Porsche 911 Other Flavors the rear-drive GTS Coupe isn't the only new 911. I also spent time in the cabriolet flavor of the GTS, which lacked just a bit of the sharpness of the hardtop but was admirably quiet with the roof up. Outside of the roughly 180-pound weight gain over the Coupe and the extra $13,000 cost, it's a no-compromise convertible. A Targa flavor is available, too. There is also a Carrera 4 GTS, which adds all-wheel drive to the mix. Again, there's a weight and cost penalty here, £99 and $7,800 to be exact, but otherwise, it doesn't give up much in the way of feel over the rear drive version. The steering has a fraction less feedback, and I felt just a bit of extra inclination to understeer when I was pushing too hard, but that's about it. Then there's the base Carrera, the other 992.2 variant available at launch of the 2025 lineup. It feels more or less exactly as it did before which is to say fun and engaging when driven hard yet still practical and comfortable for daily duty. Its turbos only feel laggy by comparison, and though it's only gained a paltry 9 horsepower over its predecessor, 388 horsepower is hardly anemic. Unless you're stacking it up against the GTS, of course. 2025 Porsche 911. Paying for the privilege. That base Carrera now starts at $122,095, a roughly $5,000 raise over last year, but it does come with several standard features that were formerly options, including LED matrix headlights, active lane control, and power-folding exterior mirrors. If you want a GTS, you're paying at least $166,895 for the privilege, a $14,000 raise over the previous GTS. Again, Porsche is piling on the former options, such as rear axle steering and the Racetech's interior package, which adds synthetic suede to the seats, steering wheel, and lower dashboard. Thanks for watching. Drop a like. Leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this.